All right, the power of technology. We are here in the Superior Clerk Office with Ms. Victoria McCullum. And it's so excited, I'm so happy to, that she's given us a time to connect with us. Uh, I'm Courtney Rowland, the Life and Transitions Experts uh, host. And as, we, as you know, I come and try to interview awesome people in the field of probate, in the field of estate planning. Um, and it really helps uh, us learn more and more about the processes so that we can hopefully avoid probate or if we're actually going through probate, navigate it uh, efficiently. She is one of the gatekeepers, one of the folks here at the Superior's, uh, well, what is the official name of this office? It's, uh, it's Superior, a clerk of Superior Court. It's a clerk of Superior Court down here in Durham County, North Carolina. So this is the office you actually come to and one of the awesome people you'll speak with if you happen to find yourself going through the probate process. So. Without further ado, how are you doing, Ms. Victoria? I'm doing good. How uh, are you? I'm um, great. I'm great. Can you tell us, how did you get involved in uh, Dentures Office? How did you, how did Victoria, yeah. I got to hear it the other day when I was sitting in the case, yeah, but so I love folks here. I actually um, I applied for a different position. I applied for it to work in, uh, in bookkeeping and child support, but they decided to go with someone else, and they had an opening here. They thought I would be a good fit for it. So I came the next day, interviewed with the assistant clerks here, and they decided to hire me. Okay, and what is your official title? Deputy clerk. Deputy clerk. And how long have you been in this role? Uh, two years. Two years. All right. What's some of the, the same, I mean, the people who come in seem happy with your work and your service and all. What are some of the things that you like about the position? Um, I like that I get to help people. You know, a lot of times when people come into our office, they're going through like the, the worst time of their lives. And just knowing that, you know, I'm able to provide a good service to them, listen to them if they need to talk to someone, and walk them through a complicated process. Yeah, that was one of the things I was surprised about. Uh, much of my work has been working with distressed property owners, mm -hmm. and probate just happened to be the space because quite often real estate's involved. You have the distress, as you just mentioned, of mm -hmm. the challenging situation, and you have property that allows me to come in and learn and step in as much and help as much as possible to provide value. Um, but could you explain to folks, like, just an overview of what the probate process is in Durham, North Carolina? Um, it just depends. So, a lot of times people come to our office if they need access to bank accounts, if they got to transfer car titles over, they got to transfer deeds over. So. A lot of times people want to prove that someone has been appointed over in the state. And so that's where our office does. We provide, uh, you know, letters, testamentary, affidavits, depending on if it's a large estate or small estate. And we oversee that process and audit the files. We want to see what happens to the assets once you open up an estate and just making sure it's been distributed to the correct people. So if you pass away, in North Carolina with assets or even debt in name. Oh, I hope we're still alive there. Yeah, it looks like we're still recording. <laughs> but if you pass away in North Carolina with debts or assets in your name, then is it safe to say that the probate is what's going to have to take place to give someone the legal authority? That's to right. Those That's right. Unless you have a named beneficiary or the joint provider survivorship, um, most of the times you're going to have to come through the court to get something from you to be able to transfer those assets over. And what I'm learning is that there's time frames you have to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, there's costs depending on how large the estate is, mm -hmm. and that's what makes it nifty and expensive. Mm -hmm. But what are what are some of the ways that someone can avoid the probate process? You mentioned one about the joint. Um, right. If you have accounts as joint with writers of ownership, or if you have... Um, like the car, if you have a joint, it has to say joint with writing survivorship um, and name beneficiaries for account. Okay. And is that dictated in the will or is that dictated in the um, It's title? with like the actual, the actual company itself. Uh, so having a will, there's some, I, I want people to hear this, but having a will, does that prevent you from having to go through probate? No. It does not. Mm -hmm. Having a will is awesome, folks. We all should have a last will and testament. But why doesn't it prevent you from having to go through the COVID? Well, you're stumping on that one. I got you. You're stumping on that one. <laughs> okay, I got you. Um, I, I don't know how to answer that one. Uh, well, you know, when I think about it, I, I feel like um, just because the will says, hey, this title can be transferred here, there's still someone, some legal authority that has to say, 
give you the authority to gotcha. transfer it over. So that's what I'm understanding okay. that, is that, okay, I have a car or I have a property. Yes, the will says this. Now who's going to be, what's the legal instrument to actually make that I happen? Got you. And so I think that's where you all come in and say, there's a letter of testament if it has a will right. or a letter of admin if there's you know, no will at all. So for me, I'm trying as hard as I can uh, to be considered an expert. Mm -hmm. I don't consider that like a destination. It's like a uh, constant mm -hmm. learning more, learning more. What, what would help make people who come into this office, what would help make your job easier? It's like someone in my world, what could I do to help folks come in and streamline the process and make Victoria's job? Um, I think you're already doing it. I mean, coming in and shadowing and asking questions. Um, another thing you may want to do is if the clerk's manual is available online, mm -hmm. maybe look into that and check out some of the general statutes as well. Uh, and you pointed to some of the forms mm -hmm. the other day too, so I'm gonna have those down and have those memorized. So making sure you know the process and constantly um, digging into the process uh, will help. What about when I'm actually connected to a, I don't want to say client, but to, to a case, to some to a personal representative? Are there any things that I could I do or someone in my position could do to help the personal representative and help make the job easier as well? Um, Become familiar with the forms mm -hmm. and being able to walk them through those forms. So when they come in, they have a good idea, okay, this is what the inventory means. Right. And this is what it means to go find all the the uh, errors and their addresses. And so having that already prepared and at least an understanding of what's happening can make the job a lot easier. So what are some of the major, not major, but um, common challenges you see someone walk in and they're like, oh man, I can see this case again. Hmm. Put it on the spot here. Put it on the spot. Probably the ones that don't have open communication with their family members are the most difficult piece. Gotcha. So making sure that they're like, hey, well, how could that, <laughs> how, what's some cases where that would be a challenge where uh, not having open communication with family? Um, because, you know, if there's not a will and there's assets that has to be split equal amongst like the children. Um, you have to do something with those with the remaining assets. So you don't need a receipt from everyone. If there's not like open communication, then it can prolong the probate process. Wow. So when we're distributing the assets, you need to make sure everyone says, Hey, I received my portion. Mm -hmm. What if they don't agree with that portion? That's what I said. They need to talk to uh, talk to them. That's what I said. Yep. I got you. So I would imagine that in my role, uh, of course, I'm not an attorney or often financial advice, but being that third party, it's kind of mm -hmm. easier sometimes to to share or explain the situation to a family member, I'd imagine. Um, and then, of course, when uh, an attorney needs to be involved, mm -hmm. our network is connecting with awesome attorneys and make sure that they're you know, set up in the proper uh, way. Um, yeah, uh, you're giving me some good information here. I'm trying to think of, because uh, I'm going to share this with uh, uh, some other vetted okay. state professionals, and so I'm trying to think what questions would they want to ask. Uh, any, do you have any uh, experience working with attorneys? I know there's someone else in the office who works specifically with attorneys, but do you have any? Uh, it's mainly just that one person that, right, that okay. works with attorneys. All right. I, I, what's then? What is what is a characteristic <laughs> that's important to have? As a either probate specialist or as a assistant clerk, deputy clerk. Um, I think the main thing is having compassion. Okay. Then having okay. compassion and patience with people. Um, of course, you know you, you do want to be knowledgeable about you know the material things like that. But I think just you know just understanding that people are going through a difficult time um, goes a long way as well. Well, like one thing I've noticed about you all in this office, uh, particularly you know, I'm sitting out there filling out the data, mm -hmm. but I hear the cases, you know, and I hear your tone, and it does seem warm, but it also is matter of fact too, because I've seen some people come in and you know they're they're under stress mm -hmm. and they want everything right now and they're blaming everybody right now, you know, and this may be the fiftieth person you saw that day. Mm -hmm. How do you keep your cool? How do you keep that compassion to keep you cool, Victoria? You seem like a mm -hmm. 
It's, it's hard some days. <laughs> it's hard some days. But I I take deep breaths and I just, you know, try to remember that they're going through a difficult time. Well, I appreciate your time. You're so awesome. Uh, folks, this is Victoria McCollum up here, the deputy clerk. You know, deputy That's clerk, right. That's superior right. clerk of Durham County, North Carolina. She's so awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm going to stop right there and share this with the world. You know? All right. All right, folks, rising tides. It lifts all sails.